Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bushman's truck driving road experiences, what have you. And we were discussing the last time about life on the road and how and how you how you should be see the phone ring here, hang on a second. Yeah, that was that was the boss. Uh, I dispatcher, my boss, my whatever you want to call it, as in transport, transport is not just a one-man job, You'd, not just you sitting in the truck alone on the road, no, 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 it's, you've got to see the bigger picture, transport is all about teamwork, 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 with you being part of the, the longer chain of events, so like, just like now, my phone rang, and that was my the principal, my boss, my dispatcher, or expenditure as they call it. Now, just as much as she's she's reliant on me, she gives me information, and she plans my trips. Um, but she can't she can't if she can't rely on me if we don't have a teamwork, if we don't have an understanding. If I don't do what she plans, then and she can't do her work either, if you know what I'm saying. So it's, it's a two it's a two way street, you know, it works both ways. So this is this is what transport is about. Some some people must tend to misunderstand and think that it's a boss barking out orders, do this, do that, do that, and you just gotta say, Yavon Massa, Yavon Massa. No, no, no. It don't work that way. It's a teamwork, it's a two way it's a two way street. But if you have that proper communication and if you most importantly are honest with each other then uh, transport is a fantastic business. Things work out well, but if you, one of you is dishonest, not quite, on, not quite with the truth, then things tend to go horribly wrong. So uh, this, is, this is another thing. So always be, always be honest with your dispatcher, your expenditure, whoever it is that you work together with. And in that way there, you'll have, you'll have a good relationship and things turn out smoothly and you both for both of your sakes uh, happy. So that was that was uh, straight straight. I wasn't I wasn't even supposed to be talking about that but she happened to fall. Now another important thing as a driver is that you can drive for hours and hours. You can offload, you can load, you can open the sides of the trailer, both sides, you can secure your goods, you can strap it, you can get covered in filth and mud and snow and ice and rain and you, you can do all you know, driving chickens and whatever, you can do all the stuff, all the hard work, all physical work, all the driving work. But at the end of the day, if the most important thing when all is said and done the paperwork, the documents. If you don't have, if you're not able to control, or if you're able to figure out how to take care of your paperwork, object the paperwork in order, and have everything stamped, signed, dates, what have you, then it means people who work in the office, people who deal with the documents, people who push documents from one office to the other office to another company or backwards and forth in order for money to change hands. Now, this is what it's all about. Is you do this work, you drive, you move stuff, money changes hands. But in order for money to change hands, you need the paperwork. As simple as that. Paperwork with this, with this perfectly stamped and signed, sealed and delivered. And when that, once that is signed, it's a, it's a legal document and money will change hands. But if you as a driver are not able to do even the most simple thing of taking care of your paperwork, all that driving, all that physical work, all that what have you, all that standing in traffic jams, all that frustration, all that maybe even anger, all whatever would have been in vain. A simple waste of time. We should, we should, we not, not, we should not have even bothered doing it if you're not able to do the most basic thing of 
taking care of your paperwork. So always keep that in mind, always check in, especially if you do international cross-border, I'm, I'm thinking more of the Europe, uh, if you do from the outside, from the EU, outside to the EU, and you've got your customs documents, you're going to have that in order. Be very, very, very careful to have that triple check, that quadruple check, make sure it's 100% in order, because there's no point in hanging, in coming to some, I don't know, Soviet Union, or some or Soviet Union, or Russia, or, or some border in the Baltic somewhere there, and you aren't able to get there, you'll be standing in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the line, hours and hours and hours to get in to the country, with your goods, and then suddenly they find that one piece of paper or something, some document, some tea document, or whatever it is, it's missing. They won't let you in. They just will not let you in. And some, quite often, it ends up with your 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 shipping company having to send a courier service with the right documents for the paper thing. All that way, so they can get your sorry ass into that country there because you were you were too lazy or you didn't have a clue or you didn't know uh, how to take care of your paperwork. So please, ladies and gentlemen always be wide awake when it comes to that. Now, moving, moving on, there's, there's some uh, paperwork business there. How you are, your attitude, what kind of person are you? Are you, are you a friendly person or are you an unfriendly person? Are you a relaxed person? Are you control the emotions? Are you an angry person. These things matter when you drive. Now, it's a bit like what they say eating food. You are what you you are what you eat. Okay, and basically the same thing comes to when it comes to driving. You, how you behave on the road means a lot. It means if you're going to be a, a aggressive bully. Basically, a pig on the road. Well, don't. What goes around comes around, and basically, the same things will happen back to you. Okay. Now, when you drive, when you, big truck, when you drive a big articulated truck or whatever truck you drive, you must remember this comes with great responsibility. You, you, you have a machinery which weighs over 40 tons, plus or minus, and you are the big on the road, you are the big one, you are the large one on the road. You fill the road, and you remember, when you sit in your truck, in your world, you don't, you don't, you don't, you can't, you don't fathom what it's like to drive beside the truck in a car, being the small one, being the fearful one. Now, you've got, you, when you have a big truck on the road, you've got to be responsible, you've got to be with, with, as I say, as I think Churchill said, with, 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 great, uh, with great power comes also great responsibility. So when, when, your, when your company gives you the keys to a million dollar equipment, half a million dollar equipment, truck, trailer, goods, you have great responsibility for, for yourself, for your company, Boss, and of course other road users. So don't be an aggressive, hostile, always uh, tailgating other people in front of you. Just being a total pig on the road. No, you, you've got to you've got to control your emotions. You've got to calm down. You've got to be in control. And this is when you when you control yourself, when you control your emotions, when you calm and never panic and never get angry. The likelihood is that good things happen. You, know, you always um, have to meet other friendly road users who are never aggressive against you, give you the right of way. If you want to overtake, they'll flash you out. They'll flash you. Please come along. These kind, of, these kind of things, you know, basic things. But if you that other opposite type, you will find that you become even not alone. Will you be if you're the opposite, aggressive, uh, angry, whatever. You 
you will actually end up being even more angrier because uh, people will behave towards you in the same way you behave towards them and this becomes a, like a domino cumulative, cumulative effect just multiplies so you've got to learn to calm down and be responsible and uh, that was uh, I don't know but hang on a second on that same subject about your behavior you must remember when you are out on the road not so much here on the road and you arrive at a customer when I say customer I mean place of uh, business where you've got to uh, load or unload whatever you represent your company, you represent your shipping company, you represent your boss, you represent, of course, yourself. Now, there's ways and means of behaving, and I find it unbelievable sometimes the lack of respect some drivers have towards other people. I mean, if you go and meet a total stranger in a company, say, example, is the Warehouse, the, the, the warehouse uh, foreman or whoever, the one responsible for offloading. The last thing on earth you want to do is to be cheeky and rude to the guy. <laughs> okay, because uh, the chances are he's not going to offload you or he's going to make you wait or he's going to drag out time or he's going to do whatever. You know, politeness, 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 respect. Okay, hello sir, uh, how are you? My name is so and so. So and so company, and I have X, uh, X amount of pallets, or X amount of collies, or X amount of goods uh, for you, which come from our shipping company, or our, uh, which, which came from this other town, or which other firm, whatever it is. Friendly, business like, and to the point. And look, and make eye contact, and smile, and be polite. But none of this, hey! What's up? What's up? Uh, I'm here. I'm, uh, I, I, don't, I don't have so much time. I, I'm in a hurry. Uh, quickly, uh, take off my palace. I got to. I got to. I got to go. I got to go. And no respect, no friendliness, no politeness. You do that, you'll be waiting. You'll be waiting for a long time, and you end up very, very frustrated, very angry. So uh, it's a two-way street, you know. It's uh, you, you've got to. Think about this. You know. Don't be such an egoist. Don't be such a horrible person. That's, that was another one of the, of, the, of the tips. Avoid at all costs saying bad things, negative things about your colleagues, your other truck driver colleagues. And in those circumstances, should you ever say anything bad? Back talk, backstab, whatever about your colleagues. It's the worst thing you possibly could do. These drivers have a nasty bad and have a nasty habits of backstabbing each other. Always, 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 always find positive, good things to say about your colleagues. Never bad stuff because as I said before, what goes around comes around and they often end up with you being target. You know, so always be, be nice to your colleagues, no matter how much you dislike them, always be friendly and go out your way to help them. Because uh, in this way you're, you're, you, begin, you, have a, you get a better reputation, people respect you and they like you and you, you'll be surprised how people suddenly will bend over backwards to help you, you know, when you in need, uh, if you ever in need. Because they know how this person, what a nice person, this person will friendly to other people, he's always helping out and he's always, he doesn't, he's not an egoist, he's just, not, just, not, just, not, just, just, he just does not always only think of himself, but he thinks of others as well, and, and, they, and they, in turn, uh, treat you with respect, you know, this is, this is the same thing, also, the same thing basically in life, you know, uh, even if you're not a truck driver, you, know, you treat people, other people with respect, and respect comes back to you. Disrespect them, and uh, yeah, these things come back, come back to haunt you. That's how it goes, you know. And truck drivers, some truck drivers, it's a bit like uh, truck drivers. They, the, the 
rumor, rumors which go around sometimes amongst truck drivers is ridiculous. Uh, it's almost like they're the hairdressers who have chit chatter, chit chatter about unbelievable things which uh, never happened. Rumors spreading, backstabbing, basically being horrible to each other for no reason whatsoever. You know, and this is, and truck drivers wonder why have such a bad reputation why the industry is always viewed upon with, with negative eyes. No, some of these some of some of this negativity which the rest of the population view truck drivers with is actually homemade, it's not by accident. It's uh, self-made problems. You, know? you, know, you don't need to you know often some many countries in the world, truck drivers, how would I put it in a nice way, the rest of the population is looked down on truck drivers, they think we are dirty, fat, lazy, overweight, overpaid, uh, scum of earth. No, this is some, and of course, uh, unclean and, and, and unwashed, but this is, this is not the truth. This is far from the truth, but this is the image people have of truck drivers. You know, they think that they're big bullies or they're big 18-wheelers on the road, forcing people off the road. And, you know, people have preconceptions about truck drivers. And it's your job, through your behavior, through your, your demeanor, to change people's perceptions of uh, how they look at truck drivers. I, 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 I see it's very, very, very far and few between you, know, you meet a horrible truck driver and the person who you wouldn't give the time of day to. to. It does happen, but it's, I don't see them that often, I should be honest. But I'm more surprised with the reaction of the general population towards truck drivers that uh, why it should be so negative. Is it because the must be because people behave badly and don't respect others and think, ah, I have my big 18 wheeler, I'm king of the road, nobody else can go, can go and jump. You know, that's a very poor and bad attitude to have. You have to remember, you know, the road doesn't belong just to you, it belongs to everybody. We all use it for all our purposes. Even, even the caravan drivers allowed to be on the road. Damn it. Even they are allowed to be the driver on the road. No matter how much they irritate you, how much they frustrate you, but even they, they should even place for them as well. And don't get too angry with them when they drive in there sometimes, as how should we put it, strange manner. But you know I wouldn't even want to think about having to jump in a car and drive a caravan. Or putting a caravan it's the thought is horrible. Thinkable. Actually, if I, have, if, I actually, if I have actually won the big lotto, uh, jackpot, millionaire, whatever it is, the first thing I probably would do is buy a caravan and, and then dose it with, with, with petrol and set the thing on fire <laughs> just, just to get rid of some of the frustrations of it. Uh, having to follow a caravan kilometer after kilometer after kilometer because we're in, in, in a zone where there's no truck overtaking allowed and this guy is just driving as a total plonker. So um, it's just it's probably just do that just to get this caravan business out of one system, you know. But that's just a ridiculous thought. So anyways, um, this was part two of the Bushman's uh, truck driving road experience or whatever you want to call it. And uh, we shall come in with installments later on more sickness on this so that this video is not just too long it's almost too long. yes so we shall meet in episode three I think we shall be so until then cheerio till we do